Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm going to take this image, which is from the Buns Artist Edition. Of course, all links for all the products mentioned will be below in the information box. And I'm going to use the same Prang oval, relatively inexpensive, who am I kidding? Very inexpensive, semi-moist watercolor paints. As you can see, they come in a tray. They actually have two little trays within them. You can replace them, which is kind of neat because I have a tendency to use up the white very quickly. And let's get to it because I want to review this and I also want to see how they work on the paper that I recently chose, the mixed media paper that I chose for my newest coloring books. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to rub and rub and rub. Remember when we were kids, we had those sets and you literally had a rub for five minutes to get any colors. These are actually really quick to pick up color. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I'll show you what happens at the end. Now, let me bring the light over. Can you see that better or worse? I can't tell. You know what? I think it's worse that way. Hold on one second. Let's see. There we go. So those are the colors. They're amazingly bright. And look at the black. I couldn't believe my eyes. I barely rubbed it. And it's black, opaque. And I'm kind of really pleasantly surprised at how nice these colors go together. This is a really nicely put together set. It's well thought out. And just like anything else in art, sometimes when the thing is not in its active state, meaning like when you haven't mixed the paints with water, you can't really tell what color they are. And speaking of the colors, there's 16 colors in this set. And what I was starting to do here was just color in those flowers. Those are bleeding hearts and typically they're uh, they're almost like a purpley, a, a, a beautiful purple red. And in this set there's only really two reds. There's one, I would say it's probably an orange red, but I really wouldn't use it for those those flowers specifically. So I colored in all of those uh, bleeding hearts with two reds mixed with mixed with varying shades of white and occasionally a little dip into the purple. Um, there is a purple in there that's more like a red purple so that was advantageous to this picture just because those flowers lend themselves to that color anyway. I would say one of the reds is like a true fire engine or blood red and the other red is more like a like a wine and then what I started to do here was use there's two kind of turquoise I don't and I don't know what they're called because there's no real names or is there let me see oh no I lied that's that would be red violet okay what I used was what they call blue what I would call Caribbean blue or turquoise and I mixed it with the white. Now the white in the set isn't like a stark snow white. It's more like a bone so it softens all the colors up a tiny bit. But that being said I really like the colors so I went back and forth between the two true greens and the two kind of turquoisey blues. I had a lot of fun with this water and I wasn't really going for perfect realism because the picture is whimsical and it's cute so rather than making it look like a true babbling brook or stream where you would take um, probably a dark sediment color and then go over the top of it with possibly some whites or light for for reflection and then get some reflection from the trees I just kind of went for fun uh, what we would imagine water to be as a kid almost and I did want to use the colors too because I didn't want to limit myself just to realism so there are two turquoise colors one 
a kind of, like I said, Caribbean blue, one like a teal blue, one is a cobalt blue, and then there's two greens. Um, one kind of a spring green and one a forest green. For the water, most of the time I just kept to the two turquoise colors. So I started to fill in certain areas here and I took some of the yellow uh, and I just started to, to, to do the base of the grass and some of the rocks and some of the highlight areas on some of the leaves. Um, and after using the colors for a while, I realized that there were certain things that I, I missed. I would, I would have liked a more, um, like a lemony yellow. This was a very, very golden yellow. So I couldn't get any like super lights without mixing it with white. So then of course, when you mix it with white, it mutes it down a bit. And I did only want to use the colors in the set for this image so you could get an idea of what you were going to get for $10 and what you were going to have to supplement. So now I started using the greens. Like I said before, there's like a spring green and there's a forest green. And I kind of went back and forth with those two, also the turquoise. And I did incorporate some of that sort of denim cobalt blue in there also into the, into the water eventually just to get some variations and different looks that's that's the darker turquoise turquoise i also think you have a much better chance at your picture coming out the way you want it to if you have a relatively decent brush and i'm not saying you have to go crazy um and get a kandinsky or something super fancy but uh I would spend a couple of dollars and, and get something relatively decent. And then anything that you use is going to uh, is going to apply better. Hi, bud. Yep, buddy climbed down. I was trying to snap to make him look up. He was having none of it. So the next thing I wanted to use was some of the purples. There are three colors that I would consider purple in there, although they consider one of them red violet. And I have to say, once I swatched it, I would have to agree. It's a little blurry, but it's the color in the center. Now here's something off the review for a second, but it's interesting to edit these videos when you're doing watercolor because you realize how much time you spend mixing colors and time off camera. So that's also time that you're not actually painting with or coloring in with a product. Now that being said, it's unlike a colored pencil and probably a little bit more efficient because with a colored pencil, you're coloring in the tiniest little area at a time. And with watercolor, not not necessarily. I have a tendency to, to, to do little bits and swatches and I don't use very big brushes because I, I just like the effect with the smaller brush. And I think after I was looking at this for a while, I realized I was being a little careful because I was afraid of the paper. So at first I was, I was trying not to make the paper warp. Um, I think I was partially conscious of the video and partially nervous because it's the paper I chose for the new book. Well, I'm happy to say that even after this very big green leaf that I'll do in a little while over, over to the right with a very opaque coat of water and paint, it didn't warp. It's not watercolor paper, but it's mixed media paper, so it's better than regular paper for watercolor. So here's the first area that I decided to paint basically with a solid color. And I did use several different colors, as you can see, but it's completely coated. And uh, I was crossing my fingers, and like I said two seconds ago, it worked out well. Now back to the paint. It's interesting to use these because I had forgotten that when we were kids and we used the sets that we got, a lot of them were shiny, meaning the paint looked shiny in the pots 
and it looked shiny even after we used it on the paper. That's not the case here. It dries to be matte and like I said before, it's pretty easy to pick up. Now that being said, I do wish the white was more pure white. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can say about the colors. I would have liked a brighter red, a more true yellow, and a pink, because it's impossible to create pink, meaning like a nice bright rose color, maybe that's the better word, out of the colors that are here. You can make sort of a light lilac, mixing white with several of the colors here, but it's not exactly what I'm talking about. But then again, then you wouldn't have 16 colors. So for what this set is, I would say I would say it's a it's a pretty decent color set. So I used the black on one of those leaves and I'm I, I put one little tiny dot of it in the center of this um, leafy bush and I was able to spread it around the entire center. I try to make what would be the top of the leaves more yellow and then uh, a darker kind of mixture of black and turquoise toward the center and it worked out really nice that that black is is pretty amazing so now i didn't just want to take a green or a gold and color the background i wanted to see if i could get any kind of texture so i mixed several of the colors together and I sort of did a little stippling and then stippled again with my finger to transfer the watery dots again and again. And I kind of liked it because it made it look textured. And then I kind of regretted it because there, it, although it looks like there's a whole lot going on there, when you're doing something it, that much, with such a little tiny area, I kind of regretted it because now I'm going to have to do it again and again about a million times. But was it a mistake? I don't know because I I did an area in front of the area where that little bun is hopping in the puddle. And I just sort of, what I didn't want to do in the first place, I sort of blended it around. And uh, it looked really pretty. So anyway, I was trying to see what I could do, and then I ended up going in over the top of it with little tiny brush strokes. Another regret. Now I'm doing that little pool area or puddle, and I'm using some of the browns. Uh, what is that one called? Oh, you know what I did? I took the brown and the black and I mix it together because the brown on its own is very warm. It's almost uh, a reddish, not, not quite reddish brown, but it's very warm. So I wanted to mute it down and make it a little more earthy. Oh, here comes more stippling. So back to the review of the, of the Prang Oval set of 16 semi-moist watercolors. I would say for $10, this set's pretty amazing. I would definitely give it a thumbs up. I would definitely use it for coloring books. I don't know if you could use it in a Create Space book. Um, maybe I'll put a little demo of that at the very end. I'll see how that works. Um, but like I said, the colors are bright. There's there there's a really good combo here. They work well together. I don't think anything's really missing except a pink. A rose pink because you can make a ballet slipper pink with the white and the red but not like a true bright fuchsia and of course neons aren't in here nor are there metallics but those are kind of specialty paints anyway that you would typically buy separately here I mixed the spring green color with the white and I have to say it formed a really nice more opaque type of coverage. Uh, I didn't do it with all the paints, but uh, I'm assuming it would do something similar. Although different, 
different shades have different um, applications on the paper. Some sit on top of the paper more, some absorb more into the fiber of the paper. So this green could have been one of those instances where it would have uh, been sitting on top more anyway. But uh, yes, the, the white made it uh, more opaque and it worked well on the paper itself. Up oh, here's the little blades of grass regret. Now I wanted to get the white as clean as possible so I wet a paper towel and I wiped it out because I have a tendency to mix and match colors all over the place because I wanted to see how white the white would be on top of the red colors and the pinks that I had created before on these pleading hearts. So as you can see, like I mentioned before, the white isn't pure white. It's white enough, but it's not perfect. And it's sort of now, I don't know if, I don't think it was still wet, but it sort of seemed to seep in a little bit. So it sort of like seemed to soften up. I wanted to see if the Posca pen sat on top of the colors any better on the blue. And I think my only fault was just not waiting until the whole thing was dry. So yes, the Posca did sit better than the white from the set. As you can see there on that, uh, on that leaf, the Posca was pretty white. So I would definitely give this Prang set a thumbs up. Um, I don't think I would use it for anything commission worthy. I don't know about the um, the color fastness uh, or really much else. I didn't look. Oh, wait a minute. What does this say on here? It conforms to ASTMD. Huh. So, I mean, okay. So, like I said, yes, thumbs up. Uh, I would definitely re recommend it for coloring. I would definitely recommend it for any kind of informal work that you're using if, if you're a student or if you're practicing. Um, I will definitely use them again. Uh, I hope you like this video. I think I am going to do more watercolor videos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test better sets. I'm going to compare some sets because I know there's a few out there. And I have used other sets. Here's one. It's called, what is this one called? K Kids KMM. And like I was mentioning before, I had a rub and rub and rub and rub and rub to get any of the color out. Yes, the color was nice, but wow, it took a long time to get any kind of density to that color on, on the brush. So... You might want to try out this set if you're just going to give watercolor a whirl. Um, I think this is a good one. And the 16 colors are just enough so you can create a really, really pretty picture. So once again, I hope you like this video. Tell me what you think of it. Uh, tell me what you think of those watercolors. If you want to see more watercolors, uh, if you want to see more watercolor videos, and if you think that you know somebody who might like this, I hope you share it and give me a thumbs up. And thank you to everybody who subscribes to me. I am so glad you're all here. So I will see you soon. Um, the next video will be the Brunzeal. I'm going to finish that picture with the design pencils. I will see you soon. And I hope you have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.